Hello everyone and welcome to the Free and Live JUX webinar. My name is Ryan Bernstein and I'll be moderating today's event. Kyle Ledbetter is the leader of the JUX project and he'll be your presenter. Kyle is going to discuss the Joomla user interface that the JUX team is currently developing and although this project is still very much in formation, he's going to discuss why the new UI is needed, what it might look like and how component developers and site administrators can expect to use it. I'll introduce you to Kyle and give you a very brief overview of what he'll discuss before his presentation, and I'll also help to moderate some of your questions at the end of the presentation. You can type a question in the slide out question and answer field to the right of your screen. And we do have a lot of attendees today, and we'll do our best to answer your questions at the end of the webinar, but we only have an hour, so if we don't get to it, you can post your questions uh, to the Joomla User Experience Forum portal at ux.joomla.org. And this webinar is also going to be available for you to review through the Joomla YouTube channel at youtube.com forward slash Joomla. As many of you know, the beta version of Joomla 3.0 is scheduled to be released in July with the official stable release set for September. The Joomla User Experience or JUX group is working towards creating a standard set of core UI elements for the front end and the back end of Joomla 3.0. Up until this point, different components have offered a different user interface and the user experience has become somewhat disconnected and disjointed because of the absence of a common UI. What Kyle will explain is that the JUX group is not simply developing a front end or back end template, but rather a set of common UI elements for the entire community. Kyle will also explain a little about why this JUI is built using Bootstrap by Twitter. A lot of this information is a review of what Kyle presented at the 2012 J and Beyond conference in Germany. It's my pleasure to introduce you to Kyle Ledbetter, a Joomla user since the Mambo days of 2004, and in addition to being the massive JUX, uh, leading the massive JUX effort for Joomla 3.0, Kyle is also a principal usability engineer for eBay. Essentially, he's a UI UX guy for a large internal department within eBay. Kyle also operates Pixelpraise.com, a company specializing in Joomla and admin templates, smartphone templates, and project management components. Hey, Kyle. How's it going? I'm well. I'm going to go ahead and change presenters. And everyone should be able to see your screen. Excellent. Okay, well, thank you for the awesome introduction. Um, as Ryan said, my name is Kyle Ledbetter. My current role is a usability engineer over at eBay. And uh, in previous life, I ran template clubs of different sorts for Joomla and had all kinds of different UX and UI experience. And uh, long before that, we also did client work where we did custom sites for, for Joomla users. So at one time or another, I feel like I've had various experience in each and every different type of background. The JUX project, the Joomla user experience project, started uh, officially last year at Joomla Day Chicago. It was kind of a pet project that became an official Joomla working group. So once that happened, we started putting a plan together, and we actually realized how short of a timeline we had for Joomla 3.0. Um, if you can see my screen right now, the Joomla user experience portal is our main area for discussions and open conversations, and openness was a big part of this effort. We wanted to reach out to the community uh, and kind of build a bridge between what was happening in the core and all of our ideas and just make it an open discussion for building a new UI and user experience that suits everybody's needs, not just one group or another. So if you go over there, you can just click on the forum link and there's tons of conversations going on. In the lower portion, there's uh, all the ones that are pertinent to Joomla 3.0 and the JUI and a lot of things that we're working on right now. Just to give you a quick overview, I'll try to run through things so we can get to the questions. Um, of course, we're using Bootstrap from Twitter, 
And at this point, I, I'm, I'm sure all of you are familiar with it. The beauty of it is just that it's the largest and most cumulative set of UI elements that you can get for free and use them to be your base for a web application. And of course, they have everything from a grid system uh, to buttons and icons and top topography, navigations, buttons, alerts, progress bars. And then they also use jQuery to give you some out-of-the-box JavaScript uh, user interactions for all the common things that you would see in Joomla or any other system whether it be modals, drop-downs, tooltips, buttons, alerts, etc. Uh, another cool thing is that they use less, which helps you save a lot of time and helps you, it's a CSS compiler. Uh, so it's a lot of modern technology. It's used by thousands and thousands of people. It's built by some of the best in the industry. So for me, it was an obvious starting point for this whole new UI for Joomla 3.0. Um, it basically has all the elements that any typical application or CMS would need out the box, and it's a starting point. Um, it's not that we wanted to just copy and paste this right into Joomla and make it look exactly like this website. We just want all these things for free, these common elements that we're all going to use, and we're also lowering barriers. Essentially, the world is now using Bootstrap. Uh, we use it over at eBay. We just rebuilt our entire massive portal on it. And it's a beautiful thing. Um, there's no guesswork. Everybody that's used it on another project can dive right in. They know the classes they're going to see. They know the simple JavaScript interactions to expect. So it really lowers a lot of barriers for Joomla. Another cool thing, there are tons of side projects right now. So if you use JCE, which is the most popular editor for Joomla, it uses jQuery UI. So uh, things are now adopting the, the, the theme of Bootstrap. So potentially in 3.0, JCE could be using this Bootstrap flavor of jQuery UI. Just to go back a little bit to show you the progress of how we got where we are, I want to show you this is a, a flat site. Uh, this is just HTML, CSS, JavaScript. This is not Joomla. But this was the proof of concept for Joomla 3.0. Um, and I want to start with the front end because this whole JUX and JUI effort, uh, it's the front end, the back end of Joomla. It's not just one or the other. It's the entire Joomla user experience for the end user and for the developer. Uh, one of the biggest problems, as Ryan said, is Joomla's become extremely disconnected. When you go from one component to another, it essentially looks like an iframe is in the page and it's loading a different app for each page. It doesn't look like one unified website. So. One of the goals we wanted to do was show that it could be used for different things. And any, any interface that you can dream up, you can use Bootstrap as a base for that. Another beautiful thing, which once again we do at eBay now, is we rapidly deploy and develop these interfaces. We used to make flat JPEGs when we developed a new UI, and the engineers would have to do a lot of guesswork to figure out how to construct this, what happens when I click this. So now the beauty of Bootstrap is that you can throw together a flat site and build an entire UX flow, which is something I think that's been missing in Joomla. It seems like some, some interactions aren't really well thought out from point A to point B. So uh, some of the things that we threw together just trying things out were new concepts for things like front-end admin. You can have like an edit mode where you can add a page within a menu or you can add a module in line with other modules. And he's still on hold. I can't start yet. Or you can click right here and it's going to collapse. Yeah, and you can see this. the page settings kind of tucked away behind the scenes. And there's different tabs and things like that. And again, this is just flat mock-ups, but this, it makes it very easy to rapidly prototype things. Um, one of the big things that we wanted to put together was examples for people, for, for component developers. And the plan is, in the end, for this to be one of the uh, sets of sample data that you can install in Joomla 3.0. You can pick a developer's sample set of data where you can get these mock-ups, essentially, of what you can use for your component if you choose to. So for things like this, right, for like uh, an activity stream for a community component like Community Builder or Jom Social, or an example, Gallery for the various photo components for Joomla. 
And a big one for me is an example uh, e-commerce shop for things like Red Shop or Virtual Mart um, that could have a unified UI and set of taxonomy that can be easily styled by a template. So that's up on this side, which we'll share this URL later. Uh, you could try that out. And then, just as importantly, we put together a mock-up for a new admin template. And again, this is all flat. This was uh, the first prototype. And it's largely what we ended up developing. But you can see some new concepts and some uh, new kind of toolbars, uh, a new use of a sidebar, um, some, some ideas for new modules for the cPanel. And again, we put together a few things like example dashboards for different components showing you that you can put together a site experience that's the same across the board, but it's changing depending on the type of data and the type of component that you're looking at. So that's also available online. Um, so it shows you the starting point. We were able to rapidly deploy this. We were able to share it over on the forum and talk to people and get feedback. And then we were able to get to work and actually start coding. So next I'll show you um, right now, this is actually a repo on GitHub. This is our current code base. And we're in the process of bootstrapping all of Joomla and creating new templates to support it. So this is the front end. And things should look very familiar to you with the sample data. We haven't changed the sample data yet. But it's just showing you some ideas and new ways to use Bootstrap for familiar things in Joomla. And this is all basically out the box flavors of Bootstrap. Uh, The bigger thing I want to show you is the current status of the admin site of, of Joomla. And at this point, I've done, uh, personally, I'm on my third round of improvements. The first round was just to get on Bootstrap. The second round was to start improving things. And the third round is to really start focusing on the actual user experience, which is the goal. That's, that's the workflow I like with, with the Bootstrap. We're getting everything onto Bootstrap, and then it allows us to focus on the flows of things. Now we're not worried as much about the technology as we are about the experience. So this is the current status. Um, some sidebar links, you know, you can get to your global configuration, things like that from the home screen. Uh, familiar top menu, but of course using Bootstrap. The latest thing that we've kind of been playing around with uh, is on the list pages, which is the table views. We have a sub-menu, but I'm also now moving the filters over to the left sidebar just to show, you know, some, a better usage of space and, and it makes things a little more accessible. You can tab through all these things. And then, of course, one of the most important screens that we're now working on is the article edit view. Uh, a big pet peeve of Joomla was that you would go to edit an article and the text editor was way down the page and it was really tiny. So the reason we're on this page is to be able to use the text editor. So you can see lots of things that used to be in sliders or in tabs now. Um, I'm now moving a few things over to the right sidebar for some details for, for common things you'll do a lot like status and access. So we're making a lot of good progress. Um, to show you how we're putting that progress together, you can go to the JUX site, and now there's a new JUX projects link, which goes to, this is the project manager that we're using. Um, and if you look at our task, there's lots of stuff to do. So the good news is that this is now one of the first times where it's really a community-driven effort. Everybody you see that's assigned to these tasks over here is pretty much just volunteers. A lot of them, people that pulled me to the side at uh, J and beyond, and we had a working group discussion there. But it's open to anybody that has experience and time. So basically, you can communicate with us over in the forum at the JUX site. And then we can chat and assign you to various tasks. You can see one of the big ones up here that I'm really excited about is jQuery conversion. Uh, Joomla 3.0 will now ship with jQuery in the core because Bootstrap was designed to work with it. And the goal is to get all the main core functions working over on jQuery. It will also ship with MooTools, of course, for compatibility reasons. But we're trying to get everything on the same page. And I think a lot of developers are going to be excited about this because a large amount of them already load jQuery 
on their own because it's easier to develop with, it's more rapid deployment. So it's really a, a chance to be a great equalizer and to get us all on the same page. Uh, there's lots of other tasks that we have going on, working on JHTML. We're adding some new features in the admin toolbar. We're adding a new admin menu. There's all, also important focuses like accessibility. While we're changing things, we want to make sure that we're not breaking things that Joomla already had going forward in a positive effort, right? So we want to make sure that we still support right to left and accessibility and all these kind of things. Another thing that we're doing is we're talking to developers while we're making the JUI, which is the Joomla user interface library. This is going to be the common set of tools built on Bootstrap that we all can share. We don't want people to have to go innovate outside the core. We want everybody to let us know what they need, what they're missing. Like one of the things that Bootstrap doesn't have is the activity stream. So a lot of components are going to be using that. So that's why one of the reasons I was working on, one of the first things I was working on was some mockups for an activity stream and things like that. Because these are going to be common elements that all components are going to want. We want to work with the community and build these things out together instead of everybody creating an island where there's repetitive code, there's extra file libraries that have to load extra JavaScript. It's going to, we can centralize these things and do cool things like uh, have a CDN posted version of this JUI with Bootstrap and imagine uh, a Joomla user going from site to site and the loading time is virtually none because they've already loaded the JavaScript and CSS. So it's really a shared community effort. Um, one of the things I want to share with you also is a nice segue. This happens to be Project Fork, which is our project management software. This is the old version. And uh, an example of how to use Bootstrap on the front end of Joomla, and not just the admin, is that Project Fork needs all these UI elements both on the admin and the front end of Joomla. So we're working on this right now. We're about to release an alpha. But it's just a quick example of some of the cool things that you can do with Bootstrap. And these are all common UI elements that other components could be using. And again, we need to work together with each other in the JUX forums to, to make sure that we're not doing things differently from each other. Variation and creativity is great, but we also need to make sure that we have a connected user experience. The last thing I want to say is this is the current location, and I'll share this URL if you already don't have it. This is the current location of our repo for the JUX. Basically, all you need to do is fork it, uh, work on one of the items over here in the task list, and then submit a pull request, and we'll all work together and get this done. And now I want to hand it over to Ryan again so we can start some questions and answers with everybody. Yeah, hey, Kyle, that was uh, some really fascinating stuff, not only extremely functional, but um, common. I think it's really important work that you guys are doing there. Uh, we did have a comment about um, your resolution. I'm not sure if you can lower that. It's only from one user, though, so I think we're doing okay on a whole. Okay. Uh, Sorry, John, I hope so. Yeah, John asked a, a few minutes ago, responsive, question mark. Any comments on how um, the UI is responsive? Yeah, certainly. I'm glad you, uh, glad you brought that up. It's a great question. Uh, the good thing about Bootstrap is that it has responsive built in. And... The current stuff we're working with is, of course, responsive. So let me just show you, for example, uh, this is a good one, the admin. If we resize down, you'll see different stages of responsiveness. And even the table, we have certain elements that will disappear all the way down. So now this is phone width. And over here, I've got, I can show an actual example on iPhone simulator. It's probably tiny with the resolution, so I apologize. But this is when you log in, this will be your dashboard, and it's completely responsive. And the nice thing about Bootstrap is that, again, we get all this for free. And we can all unify behind it. Uh, you can't do responsive just from a template. There are responsive templates now, but one of the great problems uh, faced by resp responsive templates is that every component uses different markup. So you have to insert specific responsive CSS for each component, which is a nightmare. If everybody unifies with Bootstrap, you do it one time, and out the box, 
all components will be responsive. So Kunina, uh, RedShop, K2, all these different components, they'll just magically work on your mobile devices. Well, great. Uh, you know, and Sully, Sully asked a question, RTL, I think he's referring to register transfer levels, perhaps? Uh, he's probably talking about right to left for different languages. Oh, okay. Uh, it's on our radar. We're certainly going to be uh, testing it. We haven't really got to that yet. Uh, and there isn't a huge effort by Bootstrap itself, but this is a clear example of how the Joomla community can extend Bootstrap. So it's, it's going to be in there. There's no doubt. Uh, we're working with Andy Tarr to make sure that we have all the different accessibility in RTL that Joomla currently has. Sorry, and um, Sully added to that, what is the status of MooTools going forward? MooTools will still ship, um, but it's not going to be the primary JavaScript library for the interfaces. So if people are truly using MooTools for the things that it's great at, for like frameworks, they can still use it. Um, the good thing now is that all these different people that are loading different versions of jQuery and breaking things because they'd rather use jQuery, can now unite on a core version of jQuery, which will be the latest, of course. But typically, JavaScript uh, in Joomla is plug and play, and it's used for just simple things like, like user interface interactions. That's why we're going with jQuery, plus the fact that it works with Bootstrap. Um, but MooTools will still ship, and we're going to work as hard as possible to make sure everything is compatible as possible. OK. Let me just make sure we're getting to everybody here. Robert comments, I really like the admin layout. Great use of space, but an off-topic question. Will p uh, pagination be horizontal instead of vertical? Um, let's see what it is now. So it's basically the same. It's just a little more consolidated right now using just the bootstrap horizontal pagination. I'm not sure what you mean by vertical. All right, Robert, if you could expand a little bit on that question, that'd be great. Uh, Annabelle has a question. How is, going, how is it going to be the transition from MooTools to jQuery? Are we going to live together? I think you already commented on that, didn't you, Kyle? Yeah, I mean, uh, honestly, jQuery and MooTools already live together all the time in Joomla 2.5 and basically forever, but uh, the focus is now just going to move to jQuery. So a lot of developers will probably update their components to primarily use jQuery. But a lot of them, honestly, like I said, already are doing that. There's just a select few that really prefer MooTools. All right. Sully responded, yay, exclamation point. So Sully's happy about something. Uh, <laughs> Matt comments, uh, for extension developers, what do you believe will be the average time for conversion of their basic interfaces to Bootstrap? Um, I mean, it's that's a complicated question, but it could be as simple as changing a table class from admin list to class table, table stripe, right? Uh, but then it could get very complex. But the good good news is that you might, you might perceive that as a pain transition, but it's a good thing because all these component developers that load their own frameworks and their own themes on top of Joomla they're all now, I mean, it, honestly, it's already happening. They're, they're super excited because they can finally ditch this. Uh, we had the same problem in Project Fork where we had our own UI library and our own framework, and we ended up supporting that more than actually adding features to Project Fork. So component developers can now use Joomla as an SDK. They don't have to throw in all these own things and build everything themselves. They can focus on the code and just roll out the UI that's already available for them there. So. I mean, it's going to be a transition, but uh, I'm personally working hand-in-hand -hand with all the, the more popular component devs, but we're just making sure that we do everything on the UX forum so we can list out all the best practices and kind of just help each other out. I think it's going to be a transition, but it's going to be a fun transition. It's going to be focusing on UX and programming instead of disjointed user interfaces. All right. Yeah, thanks for the question, Matt. And David asks, updating from 2.5, so I believe... Um is that, if it's just a general question, this is just an update for 2.5, a really great improvement from 2.5 to 3.0 that the group's working on. 
Yes, and uh, for 2.5, one of the things that we're going to do is we're going to uh, we're going to roll out a core version of Bootstrap, the same JUI for 2.5. It's going to be a little watered down, so it doesn't fight the current styles in 2.5. But we'll, our goal is to make it all this available for those component developers that want to support 2.5 and 3.0 with the same component. So we don't want you to have to do double work. So it's going to be, of course, after 3.0, it's the, the secondary focus. But we want to make sure that we take care of those people so you can focus on one component and not two completely separate components. Here's an interesting question from Theory. Do we have an easy way to do template overrides on the Bootstrap framework? Well, I mean, template overrides will still work exactly the same as they do today. Um, the thing that we need to figure out is the most effective way to load the Bootstrap CSS and JavaScript and things like that. And the trick of it is it all has to be there. So a lot of people have brought up uh, ideas of just loading particular parts of the CSS and JavaScript with Bootstrap for just the parts that they need. But my response is that the component developers are putting a lot of trust in the core, hoping and knowing that everything is going to be there for their component. So for instance, we don't want somebody with a site to turn off the hover capabilities uh, in the JavaScript of Bootstrap, and then it breaks components. So my response is typically Bootstrap is really tiny. And if we're not loading all of our own independent libraries, it's really tiny. It's even more tiny because you don't have all the, every component loading its own thing. So I want to make sure a base, a base set of CSS and JavaScript is fully there for all components. Now, theming Bootstrap, so creating a template on top of that is going to be super simple. You, all you basically do, you don't, have to, you don't have to do positioning in your CSS and things like that. You just put a coat of paint on it, basically, and you can do whatever you want. It's not going to look the same. It looks completely different. Uh, but you only do it one time, and it'll suit all components that are installed in your site. So you don't have to do this like we have today, where you add CSS for every single component that you install. OK. And a question from uh, Druba. These are some overhauling. Uh, would there be much difficulty in converting the current components to be used in Joomla 3.0. I think you've kind of touched on it. Yeah, and the, well, and, and another uh, to build on what I said before, it's still Joomla, and it's still largely the same core code that was in 2.5. So you can load if you want to do that. You can still load your old stuff and non-bootstrap things, right? But the whole point is that you should, if, if you're a serious component developer, you should update to use this so you can use the, the latest and greatest standards and market practices. OK. And um, speaking of marketing, would there be a Facebook, Google, or Yahoo login support, for example? Um, I mean, that's kind of unrelated to the, mm -hmm. the UI. Um, but I'm sure that's a feature that could be proposed. And, and you know, you can submit a pull request in GitHub if you want to program that. Sure. And a question from Vin. Will the menu system and the way menu items are added be any easier or simplified drag and drop, perhaps? That is a great question. Um, so as I said before, right now we're kind of, the goal is to work on the parity of features, to have what we have today, but to make it all bootstrapped and all updated interface. But one of the, the next tasks that we have in our list is to address the user experience for specific things like menu item creation. So uh, one of the things that we're working on right now is the Joomla Shine guys, which they created their own admin component that was really slick. Um, they're putting together a pull request that will have drag and drop reordering and things like that for the menu manager. So we're working on making that whole experience better. The menu manager and the page creation process is one of our primary user experiences to focus on. OK, and, and Randy had another question about override, um, which you already commented on. But he added, will 3.0 change some details in how Joomla implements the MVC? Well, that's kind of unrelated to this whole effort. But yes, there's a big change in the MVC structure. But that's coming down from the Joomla platform. So, okay. that's, so yes, and it's not part of this, but yes. OK, and Robert has a question. Mm, no, I'm sorry. I'm going to skip that one. Uh, Wendy, what about template conversion for existing sites? 
so we'll need to put together some documentation for the, the list of styles. I mean, basically, uh, one of the things you can do, since we're using most of the, the markup from, from Bootstrap, is you can see the kind of UI elements that you're going to need to support from your template. So you'll need to, there'll be a little bit of conversion, but there, basically it's going to be just adding new things. Like, for example, for these, for the thumbnails, these are going to be used now from components in Joomla 3 So you can see this simple, very simple markup that you'll need to style. And a point that I want to make is that since we're going to ship with some base styles in the core of Joomla, if your template doesn't have these styles, they're not going to look broken. They'll just look like this. Okay. I just want to make sure we're getting to all questions, not leaving anybody out. John has a question. So developers will now concern themselves with both update releases in Joomla and Bootstrap? That's a good question. Won't I always be ahead if I'm pulling from GitHub instead of waiting on Joomla to push out an update? Yeah, I mean, that's, uh, that's something that we need to address and figure out the best scenario for. Um, on the one hand, we're going to offer a CDN hosted version. So what that means is that we can update that one without a Joomla update. Um, but the, the version in the core is going to probably be, be lacking a little bit, but I'm hoping we can find a proper way to, to update as, you know, as soon as reasonably possible. We can't update the same day as the latest version of uh, Bootstrap, but I want to be soon after. So it, it's definitely a concern on my radar. I want to make sure that we, we do the best we can with that. Okay. Thomas has a question. Um... You may have addressed it. What about jQuery mobile? Is there an integration for Joomla 3.0? What about conflict between jQuery mobile, HTML markup, and Bootstrap 1? So, well, the good news about that is that um, I've already built a jQuery mobile template for Joomla before, and I know all the current problems and conflicts. We'll have much fewer conflicts, for example, since, since we'll be using... Um, jQuery just in the first place for all the components now, there won't be that conflict. Uh, there are certain very popular components in Joomla that won't even load in jQuery mobile today. So at least they'll be loading. Um, so the markup is a little bit different. I know that there is a, a jQuery mobile bootstrap theme out there I haven't really dug into, but I would hope that we can make it as compatible as possible. But just because just since we're using unified markup, it should be much easier to make all components compatible with jQuery mobile. So it'll be a huge step in the right direction. It probably won't be automatic. All right. And Roger, Joomla 3.0 is a short-term release. Is it possible to use the new UI in Joomla 2.5 as an additional template? Yeah, so that's it's actually a little bit of a complicated question, but yes, uh, like I said before, uh, the core is going to work on releasing Bootstrap for 2.5, but also right now there's several, uh, there's a whole bunch of different efforts for 2.5 going on with Bootstrap where people are making Bootstrap templates. Um, I know that there's uh, HWD MediaShare has a free one called Strapped. I know that Philip Locke has just rolled out like a club that releases uh, Bootstrap templates for Joomla 2.5 and bootstrap modules for things like menus and slideshows. Uh, and I, myself, I'm, we're going to release some uh, Project Fork. These are bootstrap templates. So I think this is going to be a real common thing that you're going to see bootstrap everywhere in Joomla 2.5 now that this is all happening. So just the, the concern I have is I want to make sure that we don't all have fighting versions of bootstrap in Joomla 2.5. So we need to make sure that we, again, work as a community and think and come up with the best solution so our versions aren't fighting each other. All right, and a comment from Sully. I, a gripe I have with Joomla now is that it isn't easy to create your own UI workflow with quick icons. Your choice is to either have the core ones alone and add to them or unload them and use an extension to replace them. Can you elaborate on the treatment of quick icons in the new administrator template? Sure, and that's definitely a concern of mine as well. Um, this is just a new markup that I've done for the existing module, but uh, that doesn't fix the issue. 
I want to, uh, one of the things I want to do for through data is make it to where other components can, on the API level, can, can hook into certain modules like the quick icons. So you don't have to have an entirely new module or override it or do weird things like that. So it's definitely one of my goals. I'd like to do that. And uh, I'd like to also work on some kinds of charts and, and reporting that's in a core Joomla as well that all components can can tie into. So we can all use the same thing so we don't have to keep recreating the wheel. And from David, does it still mean updating by clicking a button or it will will it be a migration again? Um, uh, it's still going to be, it'll be an update I believe. I think now that we have the, the, the really cool updating system from Nicholas uh, that it should still be a one-click, but of course there's going to be certain things that are going to be a migration, right? Certain things that a, an update of the Joomla core software can't take care of. So I'm thinking in the end it's going to be a one-click update with certain migrations. And from Annabal, are you customizing Bootstrap with less modification or we can just drop every new Bootstrap version in Joomla? Yeah, so that's one of the things we need to figure out um, because we're extending Bootstrap for all the various UI elements that they don't have that Joomla component developers will need and things like right to left support and accessibility. We're, we're adding to it. We're not touching the core of it. So potentially people could just drop in the new base Bootstrap CSS and it won't touch our extended. So that's something we need to figure out the best practice for, but that's that's in our mind. We're, we're building with that in mind. And for less, we'd like to have uh, all of our extended bootstrap styles for Joomla in, in a less compiler as well. And from Gregory, will you be supplying a style guide for component developers to further complement bootstrap and provide a more unified UX for components? Yeah, certainly. Uh, that's a big thing with the style guide and documentation. That's a huge thing. So. As soon as we've actually identified everything that will be in there, we're going to start working on that. Um, again, that's us talking to component developers right now. A lot of them are kind of waiting in the wings uh, just to see, you know, waiting for this to come out before they start working with it. But I'm pleading for component developers to start now because if you start now, well, you can define the things that are missing that we can add to the core for your component that we can all use. So we really need to start now working on it. And once we have that set defined, then we can roll out all the documentation and examples. And again, uh, my plan is for a lot of it, like this stuff, to be in the sample data as well for developers. So they can just install 3.io and pick the developer set of uh, example data and give you all the documentation you really need, honestly. Great. And from John, you showed the potential for front-end or inline editing. Is that functionality also on track for 3.0? Or is this just a demonstration of the UI for that functionality? Yeah, it's more of a demo right now. Uh, I'd love to get it, honestly, but it's definitely not going to be a 3.0 thing. We just have, you know, we have this, uh, this huge task list for, this is all mainly just for the admin with some, some front-end stuff. So I'm hoping that would be like a 3.1 or maybe a, a 3.2, 3.5 thing. All right. And from Theory, what about the big template providers like Rocket Theme or Utheme? Will their templates using their own template frameworks like Gantry or Warp not conflict with the Bootstrap framework? Yeah, I mean, that's a big concern. And uh, in this, uh, we've already been talking to a lot of the template clubs. Um, and most of them already like, love Bootstrap and are using it in some way anyway. I know that Joomla Shack is, is moving their entire framework over to Bootstrap. I know Rocket Theme already uses Bootstrap for uh, some versions of the back end of Gantry, so they're familiar with it, so I'm sure that Andy and his team will, will get on board with it. I mean, again, for them, it's a, it's a huge win because all we're doing is unifying all the markup in Joomla for them. So a template developer, like, like a template club right now, has to make a template specifically for Kanina or a template specifically for Redshop or whatever. Now they can make a template for all components, so it's just a win for them. All right, and a few comments from An Andrea. I'm not sure if there's a question in here, but maybe you can um, maybe you can elaborate. Current MVC structure will still exist in 3.x. We're looking to add the new MV MVC structure as an option, 
And then she commented we would be using the new MVC in 4.x. Okay, good. Well, she was just correcting me. Uh, that okay. was the question about the changes in the MVC coming down from the platform. So, like she said, they'll be available, but they won't be uh, imposed on you until 4.0, it sounds like. All right. And from Ashadi again in Joomla, well, this is a more of a Joomla 3.0 general release question. More secure, faster to load, or is it only a UI change? I think, you know, Ashadi, there are going to be many updates for 3.0, and I would stay tuned to Joomla.org to uh, look for those updates and look for sort of releases on those. Yeah, you're totally right. There, there's lots of other things going on. Uh, this effort specifically won't really advance security and things like that. It's just focused on the UI and UX. Yeah. And from Thomas, I hear that many major components will try to use bootstrap markup also. Do you have a list of them? Um, Kunina, Jam Social. Yeah, I know the, the Jam Social team is actually already building on it and releasing some really good looking uh, images on their Facebook page. Um, Kunina is definitely already doing it. AEC has already released a version. Uh, they just released the 1.0 version that's completely bootstrapped, at least on the back end, and it's really beautiful. I think the back end and front end. Um, Project Fork we're about to release on Bootstrap. Um, let's see. I mean, there's a whole lot. HWD Media Share is already on Bootstrap, uh, and I was just I was just chatting with Fotis with K2 and Ryan with JCE and Nicholas with Akiba. And I'm pushing those guys to, to start going. I mean, everybody is, is open to it and they like it. They just, it's just finding the time to start building on it. Okay. And uh, from Annabelle again, do you think in the future extensions will bun bundle only function, not design? Yeah, that's, that's my goal. Uh, I want them to be using CSS and JavaScript for their UI that's already in the core. And they just roll out you know, the PHP and the, and the custom JavaScript that they need for their functions, but they can focus on the code. Okay. And is there a downloadable beta, Joomla 3.0, available to the public? Not yet, Marcus. I think... Um, they can install. Uh, they can go to this URL. Uh, it's on GitHub. And they can just clone this and make sure you, you check out the template branch. And you can install and get this current progress that we have that, that we're updating daily. But, uh, of course, the package itself won't be ready till the beta. Okay. And, and is that July? If you pull this down, if you pull this down, you can go through the normal install process. It's just bootstrapped. Yeah, I believe that's July, Marcus. And slowly, again, with the vast size of the Joomla world, do we need to be concerned that our designs will become too blended and that all Joomla sites will look alike? Or maybe a nicer way to say this is what freedom is preserved for front-end designers to do their thing? I think that, honestly, uh, I've heard this before, and I think that worrying that things are going to look the same is a complete non-issue. Um, so right now, when you install Joomla, you install Camino or K2 or something like that, it has things like gray borders or buttons or icons, right? And if you go from one side to another, K2 never looks the same. The only difference is they have to customize each component. With Joomla, when you roll it out, it'll have some very minimal, minimal styling like gray borders or white buttons. But you customize it one time, and then your entire site looks completely different with, with minimal effort. So I think it's like anything else. People, When the 960 grid came out, people were afraid that the layouts were all going to be the same. Uh, now that Bootstrap has minimal styling, people are concerned that things are going to look the same. But maybe in this first month or two, but once, I mean, Themes are already getting built on top of this, right? Uh, one thing I want to show you, I'll pull up real quick, is Joomla World. And this is just uh, something I'm working on. This isn't actually finalized yet, but this is the World Conference that's going to be in California, you know, and this is built on Bootstrap. And I would argue that this looks pretty much nothing like uh, the stuff I've been showing you today. So wow. I think it's... Uh, I think it's, you know, it's not limiting in any way. It's just completely liberating. It's, it's the option of limiting. Opposite of limiting, sorry. And not a question, but a compliment from David. Just a, just a comment, a hinge compliment. I'm very excited and impressed. Thank you to all those involved. Wish I was a programmer and could help. Smiley face. 
I would say thank you, and you can help. Um, just as we're releasing things and, and we're releasing a lot of pictures uh, and mock-ups, go over to the forum and give us your comments. You know, We want to know from every different type of user how we're doing because we want to try to fix problems for everybody. Uh, yeah, would you mind showing us that um, that forum again? I guess we're looking at it right now, huh? Yeah, it's just ux.jingwilla.org forward slash forum. Okay. Javier, comment on the component list. Can you please comment on the component list that are on Bootstrap? Community Builder is also switching to Bootstrap? Yeah. Uh, I've been talking to Beat for a while from Community Builder there. I don't know what kind of progress they've made, but I know that they, they're building uh, 2.0 maybe, or whatever the next version is on Bootstrap. And all the ones that I named earlier. Uh, we need to put together a, a list, and we'll link to it from the UX site of everybody moving on it. But basically, you name a component, and they're moving to it if they're not already on it. OK. A few comments from Mark asking us to post a few links. Kyle, if you could navigate to those questions, you might be able to see a few useful links from Mark at the very bottom of that uh, question field. If you expand that area, I'm not sure if those links might be useful for you, if that's information you'd like to share. Uh, honestly, I, I can't see those links in my go-to webinar interface, so maybe I'll have to come back to those. Okay. Well, I believe that those are all of our questions. Awesome. So remember, folks, that this is going to be posted to the Joomla YouTube channel. And um, that's uh, youtube.com forward slash Joomla. Kyle, it's been a pleasure working with you on this. Any final comments? You want to say goodbye? Yeah, well, well thank you so much for, for organizing this, and thank everybody for attending. Um, I, I just want to, again, tell everybody that everything that we're doing is basically going to be a win for everybody from an end user that doesn't have to relearn components when they click through Joomla now to developers. It's going to be a pleasure. Uh, I think Joomla through Addo is going to really put Joomla on the map if it's not already on the map. All right. And, you know, all of these resources, again, are going to be available uh, through Joomla.org. There will be links on the front page and throughout. And uh, so you can spread the JUX love. And um, Kyle, a lot of people are saying thank you. Thank you very much. And very informative. Thank you. Joomla really rocks. Thanks, yeah. So I'm going to end the webinar now. Feel free to go to the YouTube channel to check it out. And uh, have a good day. Thanks, everybody. Bye, everybody.